Hello and welcome to a fresh episode of Decoding Tech Trends. Today we are joined by two special guests, Siva Ganesan and Krishna Mohan, head and deputy head of AI dot Cloud Units. I want to start off by just talking about uh, the necessity for having the AI and uh, cloud capabilities of TCS come together in in a unit. Can you walk us through the genesis of it? Over the last three to five years, we built considerable depth and breadth in our cloud units. And when generative AI burst on the market scape, it's only natural that we combine the forces of the cloud units, add Gen AI and AI and data on the cloud capabilities to it, and go ahead in a full way. So that's what we have done, and it's been working really well for us. Was this based on feedback that you were getting from clients and customer meetings? I think it's the way the market has developed uh, because AI was actually embedded in cloud in in majority of ways. The machine learning and the AI was already incorporated. And then when the AI actually kind of uh, accelerated with the generative AI, so we felt it was quite natural that whoever is on the cloud uh, automatically will actually have a, a natural tendency to adapt generative AI and its benefits also more aggressively. So yeah. So then my question to you would be, you know, uh, as I see it, AI will have uh, you know implications across industries, across service lines. So. Uh, I'm assuming that the AI dot cloud unit works closely with other business units within TCS. Can you give us some examples yeah. or how how that collaboration works? We work with all of our verticals, uh, the industries like the banking, life sciences, consumer business, manufacturing, and others. In our recent uh, AI for business study, right. uh, almost 87 percent of the execs, uh, you know, felt that the real value is actually to improve the revenues. Right. And reimagine yeah. the business. Yeah. So we definitely work with uh, all our verticals. If I had to take in uh, life sciences and healthcare, the entire regulatory reporting can be accelerated uh, using generative AI. We're also working on how to accelerate drug discovery uh, itself using our TCS platform that are developed by uh, our industry verticals and combining with the AI and AI capability. That's how... Uh, clients have been, you know, reacting to this unit, bringing these capabilities together and, you know, what? how are your client conversations going? A lot of the conversations have been around not just the technology, but the impact that technology has on their businesses, the assist, augment and transformative impact as we call it, and the real world outcomes that it can create for them, irrespective of which large language model or cloud platform we use. The conversation has been really about the business value. What are the barriers or challenges that uh, clients are facing? Generative AI is still an evolving uh, technology and the adoption, therefore, exactly. yeah. uh, is, is it enterprise ready? When you take it to the enterprise scaling wise, uh, you need to be pretty choosy about is there a business value? Right, uh, right. And then th- those things are only can be productized. So that's, that's when AI.cloud uh, team is actually helping. Excellent point. So then how is AI.cloud, you know, addressing these concerns and helping clients choose the right models? A lot of offerings we have created, which is fair, responsible, conforms to the regulatory rules. It's frugal that it does not consume too much of compute than it otherwise needs to. But it is well architected and conformant to sound engineering practices. I think this is where we come in as an AI.cloud unit co-working with our counterparts on the business side right. to make sure that the best of TCS as one team comes to the customers when we serve. What kind of skills do you think uh, we will need in the future to be ready for this revolution? It is a mindset that you can be AI first. I think with that mindset, then unfold the skills to do the tools or the trade. So understanding what models are out there, looking at the choice and selection of the models, looking at which cloud platforms to consume, and looking at newer techniques in the software value chain, as it were, which is how do you prompt, how do you fine tune, how do you deploy methods to do with RAG to make sure that the right results come from the choice of model that you make. All of this married to the business domain knowledge, because at the end of the day, the tech, however cool it may be, it has to generate a business outcome. Skills and the competencies are actually need to be Uh, AI-influenced, if you will. We need to look at the entire IT and non-IT ops people uh, getting reskilled on not only how to implement AI, uh, but how to leverage AI as well. So, therefore, it's a a big change management. Siva spoke about the culture. I think that's the first thing. 
Uh, second is actually also getting trained and implemented all of the new way of uh, development, uh, the co- code development. One of our customers, uh, they're in regulated industry. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily ready to completely unleash the power of Gen AI in their environment as yet uh, for complete code development. But how they have deployed is uh, Gen AI to review the code. So oh. it is the people who develop the code, but Generative, Generative AI actually reviews the code uh, to check if the code has actually been developed as per the standards, industry standards, as, per, as well as the security standards of their own organizations from a Godrise perspective. Then you are becoming more of a reviewer reviewer of the review of the whatever Gen AI is actually right, developed. Right. A lot of customers see that humans will bring in creativity while AI will assist them in, in the task. Is this coming to fruition? Content creation, uh, mm-hmm. marketing, uh, we see significant leverage of generative AI. That's one significant area uh, where I think AI creativity is uh, really collaborating with the human creativity. Are you seeing that uh, there is an impact on jobs? The nature of jobs and roles that we uh, traditionally perform, they will certainly undergo a change. Mm-hmm. Simply because you have a generative AI now in town. Does that impact jobs per se? I would argue no, because the human brain and our intellect can be repurposed to doing different types of jobs and skills that demand our own cognitive uh, sense of cognition uh, in a much elevated manner. Leaving the mundane, automatable, industrializable components to what Gen AI and some of the newer tools can do. So I think that's how we've got to look at it. Can you talk us through some of the skilling initiatives that we're doing uh, for uh, employees at TCS? We pride ourselves on reimagining and reinventing what we do uh, literally every day of the year. The experience zone that we created nearly a year ago now has been a hit with the entire organization. Uh, We have already topped 300,000 people in terms of being uh, skilled in Gen AI and AI methods in general. Uh, We have said that with NVIDIA, we will have all 600,000 of our people trained in that platform. And that's a GPU intense platform, as you know. We are very clear that the entire workforce has to be AI enabled and we will AI power all our customer journeys. Historically, and this goes back over five decades now for TCS, We've been uh, pretty good at uh, orchestrating and integrating technology product. You've both headed, uh, you know, uh, hyperscaler businesses. So how is TCS leveraging that ecosystem uh, in this unit to help, again, clients? I think we worked with the hyperscalers, uh, as Siva said, for three to five years very closely. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, developed a lot of, uh, you know, uh, skills and differentiators and, uh, and serve the customers. We are working very closely, uh, you know, with AI Cloud and our industry partners within TCS uh, in the, you know, creating those solutions to serve uh, the, if you will, the real purpose of AI, which is again looking at the yeah. business task. Did an announcement on, uh, recently on Wisdom Next. So I just wanted your opinion on, you know, uh, how clients are responding to it and, uh, and why is it uh, different from anything that's available in the market? So I think uh, customers in uh, wanting to embrace what Gen AI has to offer are confronted with a multitude of choices. Which models, how to consume it. We found in all our conversations with our customers and interactions over the last 12 months that there's a burning need out there to have a platform which can help our customers ease into this exciting cut out the noise and cut out the noise right solution into this exciting but sometimes bewildering world of what Gen AI has to offer wisdom next as we call it is a way for a customer to co-work with us and embrace how they take their aspects of business functionality aka use cases and the like experiment and play around with it in terms of consuming these models that are out there get a comparative analysis of what works best for them All of this within a safe, secure environment where they're protected against the perils and pitfalls of having to consume such of these models. Customer interactions have been very good on Wisdom Next. Uh, There are a lot of customers who are already onboarded on the platform. And we have definitely helped them uh, implement um, Gen AI uh, into their enterprise. I think enterprise scaling is one of the things that definitely uh, delivered by, uh, you know, with, with, with wisdom next. Very succinctly booked. And uh, on that note,
thank you gentlemen for your time uh this has been a very pleasant conversation we hope to see you again uh, on our studios thank you priyanka thanks no. a lot priyanka